Welcome back to Broncos Weekend. In just a moment, Steve Atwater is going to be back with his keys to victory. But first, let's head out to Mile High Monument. We've been showing you tailgate recipes all season long from some of the biggest restaurateurs in Denver. But how about a recipe from one of the biggest fans in Broncos country? Alexis is outside Mile High Monument with a special Broncos chef. Thanks so much, Matt, here with Poncho Man. Poncho Man, we're all at home, we're getting ready for the game, and we need a new recipe. And I think you have one for oh, us. Oh, I got it. I got it from a friend of mine, Mile High Chef. Every every home game, he makes these for me before the game, and it gives me my power to cheer. And these are super good. It's, it's Mile High Mushrooms. Okay, so what is in a Mile High Mushroom? A Mile High Mushroom is basically a cheese and sausage stuffed mushroom. Well, very first step for those of you at home, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. But if you're out here at an actual tailgate, you can use one of these skillets outside. Absolutely. We're gonna throw the sausage in the skillet. Absolutely. Okay. We'll get that start browning right away. And why it's browning, we're gonna add our seasonings to that. And is this a mild sausage? This, this is spicy? a mild sausage. Okay. You can use a spicy if you want. You can even use a, a vegan sausage if you want and make it vegetarian again. Now, all my recipes, if you just swap out two little ingredients, you know, the, the dairy and the meat with your with your vegan or, or vegetarian options, you're set. You can please everybody. So you have a little bit of salt and pepper in there. Next step is the minced garlic. And you can okay. buy, you can either get a couple cloves and chop them up and put them in, or you can buy something real simple that's already minced and just two spoonfuls. I love the minced garlic. I feel like I'm cheating a little bit, but... It's perfect though. I mean, when you're out tailgating, you gotta make sure you, 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 you reduce your prep time so you can spend time with your friends and family. Tailgating or at home, for me, I like to reduce my prep time no Absolutely. matter where I'm at. Less prep, less cleanup. Less is more, That's in right. my opinion. I okay, agree. this smells fantastic for Thanks. what it's worth. So where did you get this recipe? You said a friend. Um, from my buddy Nathan. He uh, he shares this with me every Saturday and Sunday there in the state, or every Sunday before uh, home games in the South Stands. Uh, Mile High uh, Chef. He's just amazing, and I, I I wouldn't have a home game without these mushrooms and him. Well, speaking of Chef, I think you probably have quite a few recipes that you could probably share with us, given the fact that you own a few diners and. Grand Junction, correct? I do. I, I own three restaurants in Grand Junction. They're called Randy Southside Diners, and we just serve American diner food. We're open six to three, seven days a week. So the sausage is nice and brown. Very next step is? Adding our cheese. We're going to add half a block of cream cheese, and we're going to add half a pound of Kobe Jack is that shredded about cheese. about half a pound in there? It is. It's exactly eight ounces. Perfect. Throw it in there. Look, I love when you don't even have to measure. That's that it. you got to keep it simple. Chuck it all in there. Keep it simple. Perfect. For those of you who like cheese, this is the recipe for Absolutely. you. <laughs> Yum. So I'm assuming the point of the cream cheese is to make it a little bit creamy, a little bit mm -hmm. kind of pliable Absolutely. to put in here. And, and it, it smooths everything out a bit. Okay. It really, really does. So how much of this mixture do we put in these mushrooms generally? Um, about a quarter, about a tablespoon, maybe a little less. Okay. And we're going to start by spraying our pan so we don't have any sticking issues. Yep, don't want those. All right, and if you want to take just a little bit, and you can either use this here if you want, you know, if you're not sure on how much yep. to, to get, and you can take and put it right in there. So you want to kind of overflow a little a bit? A little bit, yeah. Yep, okay, ooh, that looks good. Well, I got a little carried away with it's the It's okay, you know what? Let's put them in the center. Carried away is good, it's a good thing. Oh, okay. So we'll put them on the bottom shelf of our little oven. Man down, again. This one is literally trying to escape. We're just gonna throw them in there and see how it goes. Okay. And then 15 minutes on the 15 top. 15 minutes on the top. Good there. Yeah, there you go. Cool, okay, now we wait. Now we wait. Now we drink some uh, Bud Light. Absolutely. All right, Poncho Man, so our mushrooms have been in here for about 15 minutes. Safe to say we can pull them out? I believe we can. They, okay. they look like they're ready to go. Let's see what we got. Oh my. They look nice and melted and cheesy. They look nice and hot too. Let me get my trusty towel. Wow. Look at those. Okay, so. We just pick them up and eat them. Pick them up and pop them. That's it. I feel like that's going to be pretty hot. Should that's I hold off for a second? I would give them probably five minutes to sit before you do that, but okay. I'm telling you, they're, they're, they look delicious. Poncho Man, thank you so much for thank this recipe. For this me. is amazing. We appreciate it. Go Broncos.
Thank you, Alexis, and th a special thanks to Poncho Man as well for that recipe. Don't forget Broncos Country. Taste of the Broncos is going on right now, supporting Food Bank of the Rockies and the Colorado Restaurant Association's Angel Relief Fund. A lot of hospitality workers will benefit from your generous donations, so make sure to visit our website, denverbroncos.com slash taste, for more information on how to get involved. Steve, let's wrap up the show right now. Keys to victory. What do the Broncos need to do on offense? Let's head to the offensive side first. Well, one of the biggest players, most important players, Drew Locke, yes. must be protected. That offensive line needs to do a terrific job. Protect them like they're protecting their wives <laughs> at home from the, those crazy defensive players. I think that's going to be key on, on the offensive side of the We keep Drew Locke upright. We keep him healthy, not, not let him take a lot of hits. Pat Shermer, very, very complimentary of Garrett Bowles earlier this week. He's played very consistent football. Hopefully we see more of that this weekend. On the defensive side of the ball, Steve, what do the Broncos got to do? Hey, well, the Patriots do a lot of misdirection. They'll send one running back out one way and a receiver, a tight end, will be coming back the other way. And the linebackers and secondary have to make sure that they know what the defense is and what the adjustments are. Otherwise, somebody will be running wide open. So make sure they know their keys, make sure they know the adjustments, and make plays. For me, it's keeping contain on Cam Newton. You can't let Newton get out of the pocket, outside the pocket, create with his legs. The Broncos need to do a, a good job, especially those guys on the edge of making sure they wrap up and contain Newton. Are you going to be able to uh, to give the Broncos uh, any snaps? I know Ed Donatel uh, previously said, you Hang know, on, give, give him, give. I need 27 out there is what he said. Hang on. No. No, you can't, you're not giving them many snaps yeah, no, this weekend. My shoulder's still hurting. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't do it. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. We won't see Steve out on the field, but we will see the Broncos against the Patriots this weekend. Special thanks to Ed Donatel as well as Poncho Man for Alexis Perry and the Hall of Famer Steve Atwater. I'm Matt Boyer. Thank you so much for watching Broncos Country. We will see you on game day.